We can all agree that this hair type and this hair type are completely different. So the way you handle and care for them are also completely different. But for certain reasons, almost everything we knew or know about hair care came from only one point of view. So caring for this hair type is not rocket science, it's just new and different. So I'm gonna share my heat regimen process in a more technical way, so it's easier to follow and make your own. Afro hair types are very diverse and fascinating. There's so many variations that it's impossible to count. A slight difference in one line can make your successful length retention regimen look different. For example, hair types that are looser in texture, less dense, finer, or higher in porosity probably don't need to use heat to stretch their hair. For sure, I would say thickness is the most sensitive line. On average, a hair strand is anywhere from 0.04 to 0.12 millimeters. So a slight difference in how thick each individual hair strand is from one natural to another can mean the difference between if you benefit from heat stretching or not. Keep in mind, these measurements were taken from just straight hair types. So our range is probably a lot wider. So thickness plays a big part in how diverse our hair is from one another. A YouTuber by the name of Craving Curly Kinks is a great example of this. She also keeps her hair stretched for length retention, but doesn't have to use heat. A simple bantu knot, banding, and braids can give her a smooth, even stretch, even when done on damp hair, in ways that's virtually impossible for my hair. Side note! This is a huge reason why I don't like the 4A, 4B, 4C hair typing system. The diversity of our hair is way more complicated than that. This system doesn't really give us insight on how to care for and handle our unique hair. The Green Beauty Complete Hair Typing System accounts for the customized needs our hair requires. So while we both have highly dense, tight textured hair, Due to the slight difference in our thickness, our length retention regimen doesn't quite look the same. It's not the easiest thing to compare with pictures, but my hair strands are really thick, almost like wires. Without the assistance of heat, it would take a lot of repetitive manipulation to get an even stretch, especially if I'm starting from damp or wet hair. Whereas Craving Curly King's hair strands are slightly finer, so she's able to achieve a heatless stretch without much wahala. She has tons of helpful tips on how to care for her specific hair type. I put a link to her channel in the description section below. She had a major setback a few months ago, so stop by her channel and show her some love, and tell her I said it the same. So for clarity's sake, the hair types that benefit the most from heat stretching are ones that have a S, O, and or L curl pattern, tight texture, high density, thick hair strands, and low in porosity. I'm gonna be posting some videos soon on how to test each hair type line, so you have a clearer idea on what your complete hair type is. But if you're watching, you probably already know if you fit this description or not. All right, my hair is freshly washed, treated, and up in bantu knots to keep it somewhat stretched. I did a real poaching treatment, so it's really soft, strong, and internally protected from the blow dryer's UV heat. A good way to look at it is that the real protein treatment provided my hair with internal UV heat protection. Below is a link to a video on everything you need to know about heat protection. For more external heat protection, I blot out the excess water and spray the pH stabilizing spritz for two reasons. First, its humectant content will keep the blow dryer from completely drying out my hair, so I get a stretch without making my hair stiff and dry. Second, its low pH helps my cuticles relax and lay flatter, so they're less likely to dry and chip off at the tips. After I spritz my hair, I simply heat up the herbal hot oil treatment in my hands and apply an even coat. 
That's how I protect my hair from internal and external heat damage. Again, below is a link to a video where I go over heat protection in more detail. It's a different approach, so make sure to watch it for more clarity. Gauging the heat and airflow is pretty much second nature to me at this point. I usually set the heat level to medium and the airflow level to high. On this blow dryer, that gives off a max heat level of about 195 degrees Fahrenheit and an average heat level of about 163 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll give you some tips later in this video on how to gauge your level. So before I start, let me run through my approach real quick. Every time I handle my hair, I like to imagine it as three sections. My roots, which includes my scalp, the middle, and the ends. I almost always treat these three sections differently. When blowing out my hair, I like to start with my roots. The hair in this section is newer, so for most, it's thicker and more flexible. So make sure to add some tension. Not too much, just enough to stretch your hair a little and guide it on where to form a mold. So here's a tip on how to gauge your hair's heat level. Every time or every other time you pass the blow dryer over a section, release the tension a little bit to check if your hair is still stretched or curled. If it's stretched, fight the temptation, stop right there, and move on to the next section. If it takes just one or two passes to stretch a section, then the blow dryer is too hot. If it takes over, let's say, 20 passes to stretch a section, you can probably afford to increase the airflow or heat by a little. Try adjusting the airflow first. That'll probably be enough to do the trick. With all the different hair types on our head, this is something you have to pay close attention to throughout the whole process. So for my length, I consider the middle section the area of hair that's about two inches from my scalp and about three inches from my ends. This section is older, more weathered, and less flexible than the roots. So it doesn't need as much tension and probably won't need as much passes either. Our hair really does have a mind of its own. So never assume and always take time to observe your hair throughout the process. It only takes one time for you to experience heat damage. So even if you've been blowing out your hair for a long time, never forget to keep checking. I consider my ends to be about the last three inches of hair. This section is the oldest, weakest, and the most damaged area of your hair. It doesn't really need the assistance of heat to stretch, so I avoid blowing hot air on it. After heat stretching my roots and the middle section, I cool blast all three sections. Cool blasting helps to cool and calm my hair down faster, and it's more than enough to stretch my ends a little. After cool blasting, I put that section into a twist and I'm done. So to recap, I protect my hair from internal UV heat damage with the real protein treatment, from drying out with the pH stabilizing spritz, and from external heat damage with the herbal hot oil treatment. My blow dryer is set to an average temperature of about 163 degrees Fahrenheit. I start with my roots, move on to the middle section of my hair, and skip my ends. Then I cool blast all three sections to calm my hair down and lightly stretch my ends. On average, I wash, treat, and blow out my hair once every four to five weeks. To further avoid heat damage, it's best not to blow your hair out too often, no more than once every two weeks. In the next video, I'll show you how I keep my hair clean, stretched, and lubricated between blowouts. One last thing. Here are some questions you may be thinking. If I missed anything, let me know in the comment section. Hey, guess what? There's a sale going on right now at greenbeauty.com. 
Use coupon code BLACKFRIDAY2018 for an additional 15% off. I hope this video was helpful. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.